wanted I wanted her to go around again, didn't you? <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl, for that beautiful music. Good morning. Happy Fourth of July. This is a red letter day. This is great. It's Fourth of July on a Sunday. And in addition to that, um, we've got hymnals in the pews that you're welcome to use. Yes, isn't that wonderful? Um, and and friends, especially today is a great day because we have Reverend Ken Daniel joining us today as our associate pastor. And he'll be bringing the message today, telling you a little bit about himself. And so I greet you in the name of Christ and welcome you to this worship service. Uh, just a couple of things before we get started. We need volunteers. We are desperate for volunteers as we begin to get back to ministry uh, in person. We need folks. We need folks to help with the hospitality. We need folks to help with the ushering. We need folks to help with running the slides back there. Amen, Leah Beth? <laughs> we, need, we need some help. And so if you feel like you could donate some time, even those of you who are watching at home, if you could help out remotely, we would accept any and all comers, anybody that is has some time that they can give. Remember when we join the church, we say that we uphold it by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our there it is, so you know. <laughs> so, so we need some volunteers. Just let me know if you have some time that you can spare to help out in the ways that we need it. Um, and I was remiss in something, friends. I made such a big deal about today being Ken's birthday, which everybody say, happy birthday. There it is, yeah. I forgot to also mention Allison Eckert, who is our office manager, who has been working so hard for this church, especially during COVID. It's her birthday today, too. So all the time I'm telling her, don't forget to put in there about Ken's birthday. Don't forget to put in there about Ken's birthday. And it's her birthday. So um, maybe when you get home, you can give her a little call, leave a little message, just tell her happy birthday and thank her for the fine job that she's been doing. Uh, she really has made being in the office a lot easier for me because coming in here now I've been here a year but I feel just as new as Ken because I'm not used to normal here right everybody's saying we want to get back to normal what does that look like I don't even know right so so we'll be making some mistakes I'm sure we'll forget to tell you that we're passing the plates so if if the plate comes your way, just put some money in it. You know, you know how to do that, right? And if it comes around again, just put some more money in it. You know how to do that, right? We'll make it work is what I'm trying to say. And if we give one another grace as we get back to um, worshiping together, um, won't that joy carry us through any, any faux pas, right? Um, so, uh, I, again, I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that we are able to worship together. Let's do what we came here to do, which is to worship our God. And we'll begin with the passing of the peace. We're still not at the place where we want to encourage everybody to stand up and just do the big hug fest. But, you know, you can say hi, you can wave, or you can do what we do. Peace be with you. And the response is, and also with you. So say hi to your neighbor. From mountains high to valleys low. Let the echo of praise resound. From the mouths of children and the prayers of all. Let thanksgiving For great is our God. And greatly to be praised. Friends, will you join together in singing, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah.
everybody standing and singing, um, but as I said to Pastor Ken, when in Rome, um, so, so we stood too, but um, we, we haven't planned for that and the screens aren't ready for that, but um, we'll get through this together, amen? I have to, I have to, I have to. You can hate me for this if you want to. We are not out of the woods yet, and there are still people who have a compromised immune systems. There are still people who can't get vaccines. There are children. There, we, We're not out of the woods yet, and I know we so want to just rip that Band-Aid off and be done with it, right? But we're not out of the woods yet, so I pray patience. Patience, please. Patience, please. All of us, until we reach that point where no one is dying from this disease. I've said my piece. Thank you for listening. I love you. So, first of all, I want to dovetail on Rep. Lynn's call for um, volunteers. We are getting back to where we are going to be having scripture readers in the service. And even those people who are watching us by live stream, you can also read scripture. We have the technology. So we can record you ahead of time and get it to Leah Beth and she can add it as part of the service. So if you are willing to be a scripture reader, please let me know and what dates you're available and I will put you in. So now this morning's scripture, the first reading, comes from Psalm 48. Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised, in whose city is the holy hill of God. Beautiful and lofty, the joy of all the earth, is the hill of Zion, the very center of the world, and the city of the great sovereign. God is in its citadels, and is known to be its sure refuge. Behold, the rulers of the earth assembled and marched forward together. They looked and were astounded. They retreated and fled in terror. Trembling seized them there. They writhed like a woman in childbirth, like ships of the sea when the east wind shatters them. As we have heard, so have we seen. In the, in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God, God has established it forever. Selah. We have waited in silence on your loving kindness, O God, in the midst of your temple. Your praise, like your name, O God, reaches to the world's end. Your hand is full of justice. Let Mount Zion be glad and the cities of Judah rejoice because of your judgments. Make the circuit of Zion walk round about it Count the number of its towers. Consider well its bulwarks. Examine its strongholds that you may tell those who come after. The God is our God forever and ever. Who shall be our guide forevermore? Today, 4th of July, we have a very special children's message for our youngest disciples from some young disciples. What did the 4th of July drink? Liberty. It's a day when we be independent from Britain. It was a day that presidents got born. Because it's Independence Day, and that's when the Declaration of Independence was uh, written. Um, 
fireworks. Anything else? Eating hot dogs. I don't know. Um, I kind of forgot. It's my favorite. Not really. He lived in the White House, and he helped the war. Made boss people wrong. He, um... Hmm. Probably what all the other presidents do. I did, like, fly to Disney World every day. Probably eat lots of treats and all my favorite food. <laughs> no punishment for mom and dad to play with my stuffed animals. I can make slime and play Xbox on the weekdays. Um, they put like a bomb in there and then they like launch it and it explodes. So like, doing kaboom, doing kaboom, doing kaboom. That would be kind of like a scary job. So first you have to light something on fire, put it on the rocket, like put it in a launcher, and boing! Or if you just throw it, you might actually like hold the rope and get on fire and get burned. They pop up in the sky. Are they loud? Yeah. How loud? Rocket ship when it's my night time. Because so because because some fireworks have five rocket ships. They blast in the sky and they're colorful. What color? And they're very loud. Blue and red and purple and pink and red. I don't know. Maybe think about America that that's hot. Like, has lots of cities, cities and lots of food and lots of people and all friends and houses and all of that. And we live in it. Uh, that we can go places? Um, I don't know. I like America's food. Red, white. Because that's my favorite color. Um, there's 13 stars and 13 stripes. How many stars are on our American flag? Um, 15 for every 15 states. Red. There is red stripes and um, white stripes and white stars and blue. This, like there's a corner in the top and it's blue with 50 stars and then the rest is um, red and white stripes for the 13 colonies. We either go to my grandma's cabin and uh, we, we do a parade. They have like one of the best fireworks and we, we're on the beach and they're like, we sit right on um, the front rows and stuff. To see the fireworks and to play in the blast. Blow stick. We went to my, my grandma's house and um, we had the whole entire list to find and we had to mark off what we found already. Eat hot dogs, fireworks, go outside, lay on the glass sometimes, hang out on the couch sometimes, and just watch 4th of July movies. We have like star sunglasses and like striped clothes and we decorated our bike and our golf cart and we um, drive around and we walk around and our bikes were like covered in like confetti a little bit. I love America! The White House sinks. Why can't I have a cool name? I changed it into Deluxe World. Yeah. Friends, another special treat, the Hope Brass. 
brought to you virtually today. Someday we'll get them in person here, right? Someday soon. Sorry. <laughs> Today's second reading comes from 2 Samuel, chapter 5, verses 1 through 5 and 9 through 10. Then all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, Look, we are your bone and flesh. For some time while Saul was king over us, it was you who led out Israel and brought it in. The Lord said to you, it is you who shall be shepherd of my people Israel. You shall be ruler over Israel. So the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years. At Hebron he resigned over Judah seven years and six months. 
and at Jerusalem he reigned over all Israel and Judah 33 years. David occupied the stronghold and named it the city of David. David built the city all around from the Milo inward, and David became greater and greater, for the Lord, the God of hosts, was with him. The word of God for the people of God. Good morning. Uh, as I said, I'm uh, Reverend Ken Daniel, and it is my honor to be here uh, worshiping with y'all, spending time with y'all, and then moving together in ministry. And one of the things I wanted to share was a bit of my story, a bit of who I am, because that, that helps us know each other. It helps us uh, to get to know as we get to meet one another and share our stories together. It helps build up trust. When we start to know people, know uh, who they are uh, and how they work. And so I'll let you in on a little the inside of, of what goes on up here sometimes. Uh, it might be scary for us, so we'll just walk through it together. It'll be all right, though. Um, but I wanted to share a little bit. Y'all been spending time in the story of David. And as we learn about David's story, as we learn about his, success, his successes, his failures, um, the trouble that he had, as we learn David's story... We get to know who David is. Earlier in, in the calendar year, but we've we spent time uh, since Christmas looking at Advent, looking at who Jesus is, walking through Jesus' life. So we get to know who Jesus is, the experience that Jesus had. We get to empathize, and we get to trust who Jesus is. And so it's great to know uh, each other's story. And so I wanted to, to just break the ice and share you a bit of my story. And as I get to know you, I'd love to be able to hear your story. So we get to know one another. One of the things in my story that I need to just get out in the open early is that I'm from Texas, um, and that's already been a thing. Uh, people have already explained that to me, and I'm seeing a few, few, few excitements, a few, okay, well, we'll worry about this guy later. All right, that's fine. Uh, one of the things that's important when you're from Texas is to make sure everybody knows that. And so I'll talk a lot about being from Texas. Uh, we're very proud of that. Amanda, my wife's also from Texas. We actually... Um, brought Texas soil from her grandmother's house in Mineral Wells and allowed it to get transported during COVID, it was a little interesting, um, to us so that Grace could be born over Texas soil um, because, <laughs> because that's, that was important to us um, for her to be, you know, living in Wyoming. Um, uh, we're, we're clear to tell folks that we're not from there. We just were there for three years, but we're from Texas. This is just what, what you do. Um, uh, there was, we read a story about somebody um, who was, uh, had a child in Italy, and they worked to get soil there from Texas so you could be born over Texas soil. It's just a thing. It's who we are. Um, I, I, I could explain more, but you kind of have to be from Texas, and you just like, yeah, that's how we are. Um, anyway, so uh, as I said, uh, uh, Grace uh, and Amanda are here. Uh, they're over. Uh, Grace needed to roll around uh, in the cry room a little bit um, because we did a little bit of traveling yesterday. So she's tired of being uh, uh, seated a little bit. She's uh, 10 months old. Uh, is absolutely precious. And uh, we've had so much fun. Uh, my wife, Amanda, uh, is actually from Mineral Wells and then was living in Fort Worth uh, when I drug her up to Riverton, uh, Wyoming for a few years. But um, we, uh, we're excited to be here. Uh, we're excited to, to have that time. She is uh, the coordinator for young people ministry and camping ministry for the Mountain Sky Conference. So she works uh, for the United Methodist Church. She works for our conference and the conference office. Uh, and so she's uh, glad to be down here uh, closer to the conference office and then be able to work out of uh, the hub uh, of, of D the Denver airport to be able to move about the conference pretty freely. So we're excited about that opportunity. We actually now live in Lone Tree, which we have renamed uh, Lone Star. Uh, we haven't told... <laughs> We haven't told them that yet, um, so I don't know if I need to go to city council meeting or how that will work, but um, uh, we like to, to, to bring a little fun, and I, I hope it's coming across that um, I, I like to have fun when I'm, when I'm doing things, and so uh, I may be a little silly uh, and throw in a few dad jokes because I'm working on those really, really well, uh, so if you'll just uh, smile and nod if you think it's annoying, that's, that's fine. I would appreciate it. 
But um, I, w- I grew up in a, a city uh, named Dallas. Uh, there was a TV show about it. Um, I don't know if you're, you're familiar with that. But, um, but that's where I grew up. I went to First United Methodist Church uh, in Richardson, which just was a suburb of Dallas. And I did not know that at, at the time, and even still now, it's one of the largest United Methodist churches um, in United Methodism. Uh, it just was my church. Down the, uh, down, right around from where I used to fly my kite, uh, they built what is the largest Baptist church. Last I checked, they had like 20,000, 30,000 members. So my church seemed kind of small, um, but my youth program had about three to 400 youth in it. I had about 70 people in my confirmation class that moved into my first uh, seventh grade class. But I grew up uh, going to church. That's what we did every single Sunday. And then uh, when the youth choir was invited um, continually to sing because they wanted youth in the service, so they just invited the youth choir to come uh, sing at the 8.30 service, um, I just kind of sat up with my friends up there. So I started spending like two whole hours at church um, because that's, that's kind of what uh, I wanted to hang out with my friends. And so spending time in church, spending time in worship was something that I, I just grew up doing. I then um, moved, went to Texas A&M, so I'm an Aggie. Uh, please, oh, I heard, wow, all right, I'm hearing some gigams. Um, I have not had a lot of that. Um, there was, uh, when I went to Riverton, there was a Longhorn on Staff Parish. He missed the Staff Parish meeting where I was introduced, which is probably why uh, they went ahead and allowed me to come up there. Uh, but please, if when you meet my father-in-law, please do not tell him that I went to A&M, if that can just be our secret, because he's a very big Longhorn fan, uh, and he would want our marriage annulled. Um, if he found out. So if we can just, just together, uh, if I can trust you with that knowledge, uh, I would appreciate that. Um, but um, anyway, we have a lot of fun. Um, I went to a and United Methodist Church. I was involved in the Wesley Foundation there. And there I started feeling this, this tug, this call into ministry, which I thought was completely ridiculous. Uh, why in the world would I do that? But then I remembered this aptitude test I took in seventh grade for, for career aptitude, which is kind of when we did it uh, in the school district. And it said that ministry was kind of one of my things. And I remember looking at that then, and I remember feeling this call into ministry uh, at this time as just something silly because I was going to be an electrical engineer. I was going to work for Southwestern Bell like my dad. He seemed happy and seemed comfortable. I liked the life that I had. I, I could just follow in his footsteps, except I took the intro to intro engineering calculus, <laughs> and I didn't do well. Um, and so I kind of figured maybe engineering calculus wasn't where I needed to go, and I bounced around for a few majors. I was going to go redevelop the economic systems of lesser developed countries with a geography degree. Uh, I had a lot of different ideas, but this call and this tug uh, to ministry um, was just overwhelming. And I'll just, I'll just speak it. God's annoying. Uh, God will continually tug at your heart and tug at your heart and, and just pull you to where you just kind of have to surrender. It's amazing when we have our own ideas. It's amazing when we know what's best, when we know how we need to live, but God knows. God has God's own ideas, own thoughts, and and the creation of who we are. And so I continue to feel this tug. Uh, There's a lot of things going on in my life at the time, and so uh, I, I went to seminary. And they want you to read a lot and write a lot. And I didn't like that so much. (laughs) And so I again was asked to maybe take some time off from school uh, to to kind of think about was this was my calling. Uh, You have to meet with several committees uh, at the district level and at the conference level. And the district level committee just said, hey, you need a little more time which I took as we don't want you to be in ministry. And so I had to find something else to do. And I thought, oh, service to others, teaching, I could teach. So I went and got my certification. I taught at the elementary level. I taught at the middle school level. I taught at the high school level. I went and got my master's of education administration because I was going to be a principal. And then I realized that um, it wasn't what they painted the picture was with school, 
when you're in school, they're talking all about curriculum leading and how you are going to move this school forward and those kinds of things. And when I sat with the assistant principal during my internship, he didn't do a lot of leading. He just sat and told students to stop cussing out the teacher. And then student after student after student, this kind of thing. And that's not really what I wanted to do. So I again started searching and looking. And, and of course, God's in the background this whole time, really pulling at my heart, really tugging, wanting, pulling me back in, into the idea of ministry. And so, uh, again, uh, made some, some navigating through the, the committees and those things. God kept telling me, not yet. I know you're ready, and I know you want to. I, and if I can use the, the phrase you said earlier, just rip the Band-Aid off, and let's just do ministry. Just get me in front of the church. Just let's do this. But God still was like, be patient. Be patient. Uh, and, and I absolutely hate that, and that reminds me of the phone message at the Wesley Foundation when they would put you on hold as you're trying to navigate the, the phone system. It said, patience is a virtue, please hold. And I hated that. <laughs> I hated that. And I, I, I just, I'm ready. Let's go. Why, why wait? But God was still working on my heart, still, still working on me. And I was helping out with a youth program at a church. I'd left, uh, left teaching. I was starting seminary at Iliff here in Denver, started coming up to Denver, started liking the Denver area uh, and the mountains uh, and my, my aunt and uncle's place in Winter Park near skiing. Uh, this was kind of a thing I kind of liked, I'll be honest with you. And I went to annual conference to help out with the, the, youth, the conference youth group and uh, I met Amanda. And I'll just go ahead and, and speak it. Annual conference is not that romantic kind of place. Okay, I just, if you've ever been to it, um, uh, you know, it's just, and so Amanda had absolutely no interest in me whatsoever. If you ever get to hear the story, she will, she will say it that way. Um, and, but all of a sudden, a month later, we were both at the same mission, uh, conference youth mission trip. And then a, a little while later, we went to some youth training. And then we were at this youth conference, conference youth event and that conference youth event. We started spending more time uh, with each other. Uh, maybe I wore her down. I'm not sure uh, what, what happened. Um, but uh, as we started uh, to date, as we started to really spend time together, start talking about our future together, I got a call saying, hey, how would you like to come uh, do ministry in the Mountain Sky Conference uh, in Riverton, Wyoming? And it took a bit of convincing, uh, but Amanda went ahead uh, and, and, and came up uh, with me. Uh, we got settled in, um, and uh, then she went back real quick to get, uh, to get ready for our wedding. We got married down in Cloudcroft, New Mexico. Her folks live in a little place just south of there, if you're ever near Alamogordo or White Sands, the, the mountains up to the east, uh, right up there is where we got married. Um, and um, so, yeah, about three years ago, we, we drove up uh, to Riverton, Wyoming. We've been there uh, for three years. Uh, we had grace, again, I want to remind you, over Texas soil um, and, and have our life. We're sharing things that we love. Uh, I don't have my office together yet, but you will see very quickly that I. Uh, and Amanda, as well, uh, are Star Wars fans. Uh, there's a little bit of debate on who's uh, more of a bigger, bigger fan. I will say most of the art uh, and things that I have are really actually hers, um, but I won't tell her that or acknowledge that too often. Um, but uh, grew up with Star Wars. That's something that, that uh, we love and, and share together. Uh, we're also very big Marvel fans um, and love to talk about uh, theology uh, in Marvel. Um, and, and really excited. I don't, if y'all are Marvel people, great. You'll totally get this. If not, just if you'll just smile and nod with me and just affirm me anyway, um, which I appreciate because Allison mentioned that she had a birthday but did not mention it was July 4th. So I think she realized I was a bit needy um, and just let me go ahead and have this one uh, and she'll take the next, uh, next year's uh, birthday. So I appreciate that from her. But um, so we, uh, with Loki... We're really interested because the, this idea of free will is really working into that. 
Um, and so Amanda and I, uh, after we watch Loki, then have like an hour, hour and a half theological discussion about free will uh, and how that works because that's just kind of who we are. It's something that we love. So you'll hear me occasionally mention some Marvel references. Uh, Amanda does training. If you want to know about the Marvel Universe, uh, Will can do a movie-thon and watch some of the movies together uh, if, you're, if you're willing. Nobody at Riverton ever took us up on that, um, but we did convince a few to go to Captain Marvel, uh, a few uh, to watch Ant-Man, um, and so we can be convincing of that. But um, we're people who love adventure. We love to go out in the outdoors. We love to ski. We love to hike. We love to bike. Um, anything that gets us uh, outside, we just so much enjoy in our teaching uh, grace, that, that love uh, and excitement. She's already taken swim lessons over at Holly Pool over on Arapaho. Uh, she's 10 months, but I really feel like she was the best in the class. Um, <laughs> she's just, just great, um, and, and we love her. She's in the process of teething, so you may catch her uh, today uh, being a little fussy. She, it was an interesting morning. Um, and, and so... If I make mistakes, you, you will know it really, really well because I'll, I'll make big ones. Um, uh, but it's not that, that lack of trying. It's not that lack of wanting to see where God is calling us next, to see where God is moving us and working through. I come across as very put together, but I assure you I'm totally not. Um, already I have uh, dirt marks that I've tried to wipe off in getting uh, the stroller out. We've taken it on a little trail up in Winter Park. Um, and so the stroller was a little muddy. And so taking that off this morning, uh, Amanda looked down. It's like, what is up with your pants? Um, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. So um, I'll come off all cool and collected, but there's a lot of times I'm uh, basically a little duck on a, on a pond uh, looking nice and cool on the outside. And then uh, under the water, those legs are just moving as quick and as fast as they can. Uh, but I'm excited to see what God has in store uh, for us next as we grow in ministry together, as we do this work together. It's not easy, but oh my gosh, it is so much fun. Uh, it's amazing to see what God has in store. And when we get frustrated and, and upset, um, which I have countless times throughout my life, knowing that I'm ready for ministry and that I'm ready for ministry, and God was uh, not quite yet. Not quite yet. You're going to have to learn to read and write papers. You're going to have to learn patience. You're going to have to learn uh, so many different things. Um, and so it's amazing to see how God works. And so that's just a little bit about me, uh, a little bit about uh, Amanda, Grace, and I. And so we just wanted to share that with you. And I look forward to hearing your stories uh, and getting to know you. So thank you so much. It's been my pleasure and excitement to be here with you. All are so happy to have uh, Rev Ken here and to join the Hope family. And uh, as we all get to know each other a little bit better, um, I just have to ask this question. So is Spider-Man Marvel or? Okay, so Spider-Man is, <laughs> is Marvel, but he's owned by Sony and not Disney. And so there was some sharing that was allowed in that, but Sony and Disney aren't friends right now, and so the Marvel Universe, Disney Marvel Universe, can't mention Spider-Man right now, so this last Spider-Man movie was a Sony project, that's why there wasn't a lot of uh, ah. interface, and the next one that's coming out here soon um, is also just a Sony-only project, and hopefully Disney and Sony can get to be friends again, because I really want to see Doom, Dr. Doom, come in. <laughs> that would be a great thing. And Amanda's over here, like, just shaking my head. She's the expert. She's the one you really need to talk to. I pretend like I know stuff. She knows it upward, upside down, backwards, and forward. Amanda, did I say that right? Or? She's, she's hey, back wanna... <laughs> in the back, back, saying, leave me out of it. What? Oh, yeah, there's still Marvel, but... It's still Sony and, okay, all right. All it's right. Marvel. But, but the thing about Mar Marvel is about transformation. Right. And the other one is not. Is that, no? We can talk more. Okay. I can't give an easy answer to that. Do you, I, see, do you see how we're going to learn? <laughs> Thank you, Larry. Will you take us into Shirley the Presence?
Friends, will you join me in prayer, please? Gracious and loving God, we come to you listening and ready to answer to whatever call you have placed on our hearts, whether it be ministry, whether it be medicine, whether it be Marvel Comics. <laughs> However, you have talented and gifted us to bring your love into the world, to bring your good news to those who most need it. Let us answer that call. Let us be ready to say yes and move when you move us. Forgive us for the times that we have resisted. Forgive us for the times when we have doubted ourselves and thought that you couldn't possibly be calling us to do that. Give us wisdom and courage to be your light to a world, to call on those who most need to be connected to you to offer encouragement, to pray, even for those with whom we disagree so vehemently. Gracious God, help us be that loving community that you have formed us to be. Let us live into that, keeping you first and foremost in our lives so that we too may dance as David danced, reveling in your love, feeling the joy of being together in your mission and ministry in the world. Gracious God, we thank you for this country, for this land where we may gather and worship as we see fit. Be with us always. Gracious God, be with those who are needing your healing hand. Be with those who are facing news that might not be what they had hoped. Be with those who are struggling with mental illness with violent thoughts. We want to be your love in the world, so show us where we might help those who need to see what love looks like. Gracious God, we thank you for today when we celebrate the birth of a nation even as we always celebrate the birth of your Son, Jesus, our Lord, the one who taught us how to be a community together in love, and the one who taught us how to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and lead us who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen and amen. Friends, we have a very special treat today. I am so happy that Emily is here to play with Cheryl, our stars and stripes forever.
Speaking of wanting them to go around again, right? I mean, couldn't you listen to that all day? Thank you so much, Emily and Cheryl. Thank you so much for that glorious music. about passing the offering plates around <laughs> two or three times. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're getting back in the habit of that was the offertory. I didn't ask uh, for the ushers to come forward and pass the plates. Uh, don't worry, Emily, you don't have to play it again, although we would absolutely love to hear it. Um, but I, I, I invite, uh, what shall we do, Larry, while we're taking uh, offering? Let Cheryl play for her, throw her under the bus, right? Okay, I'm sorry about that, friends. Cheryl, can you riff for a few minutes while they're taking the offering? Yeah. now the prayer after our offering. Gracious God, thank you so much for these gifts. May they bless your people, bless the receivers and the givers of these gifts, and know that everything we give is in your name. Gracious God, amen. Are we doing communion now? Let's do communion now, shall we? Oh, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Creator God, we, your people, love this land that you made, this land rich with rivers and forests and mountains and creatures great and small. Here in this land, you call your people to be a sign of your love and grace for all people. For such a place and such a calling, we give you thanks praying that we may live into the dreams that you set before us. We give thanks to you, everlasting God, for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who sends us into the world to tell every creature on earth your good news, justice to all people, sustenance to the poor, release for the captives, vision of your love for all who are blind to it, and freedom for the oppressed. As we come to your table, we remember the night before Jesus was arrested, he ate with his disciples, taking the bread, blessing it, and giving it with these words, take, eat, this is my body. 
And after the meal, he took the cup also, blessing it, giving thanks to you and reminding all of us that this is his life poured out for all. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we humbly ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on all of these gifts of bread and cup. Make Christ known to us in the breaking of this bread and the sharing of this cup. Renew our kinship in him that we might be his love and light for the world. And the people of God said, amen. So we'll share the bread, the wafer first together and then the cup together. And in the United Methodist Church, I like to remind everybody that all are welcome at the communion table. You do not need an invitation or a membership card. Um, you don't have to have any requirements. You don't have to be this height to, to share communion. All are welcome. And so, my friends, this is the body of Christ given for you. And as you take the second cover off, if you remember to leave them attached, then you don't have trash to deal with, my friends. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Amen. Let us pray. As a forgiven and reconciled people, may we continue to work for a world where none shall hunger or thirst, where war is a distant memory and the peace of Christ rules in every heart. Amen. And now, friends, we join in our final hymn together, Savior, Like a Shepherd, Lead Us.
hear these words of benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen.